Hello everyone, my name is Chris Sauls and today I'll be presenting our work on token level fuzzing. So for a bit of motivation, let's take a look at a couple of old CVEs for JavaScript engines. As you can see, these bugs, they're highly structured. They have to follow the grammar and then find an edge case in the interpreter, which it evaluates incorrectly and triggers a bug in the interpreter itself. And it's difficult for typical fuzzers to create inputs like these because these inputs are highly structured. They have a syntax and a grammar to them. So if we take and look at normal fuzzers, these are byte level fuzzers. Like, so if we look at AFL and libfuzzer, they apply their mutations on individual bytes. What that means is given a string, they'll replace bytes in the string. They might add a series of bytes, remove a series, but all their mutations are done on the bytes themselves. And when we consider like a very simple JavaScript snippet, what happens if we apply byte level fuzzing? Well, we have this while bar.x, we might put a J in the middle of the word while. We might add a random star, random other characters. I chose printable characters here, but we could even add non-printable characters. And we'll just normally create tokens or invalid syntax that just gets rejected immediately. And these inputs, they won't even make it very deep into the parser. So when we use bilingual fuzzing for interpreters, we don't make it very far. Most mutations just result in simple syntax errors. This doesn't generate much coverage. Of course, um, dictionaries, which are popular, dictionaries mean you give it some known tokens and we'll try inserting those tokens in random spots. This still suffers from the same issues because it doesn't know where to insert the tokens. It might insert the word while in the middle of the word function and just create another invalid token. And it still suffers from the other same issues because most of its mutations are still byte-based mutations. On the other hand, we have grammar-based fuzzing. Now, this is the most common way to fuzz interpreters. You specify grammar, and then you apply mutations following the grammar. This has shown very impressive results on JavaScript engines and other interpreters. It's found a large number of bugs, and there's some very well-known fuzzers out there for JavaScript engines based on grammar-based fuzzing. One example, which I'm going to show here, borrowing a couple slides from his presentations, is by Salo. It, his um, fuzzer was called Fuzzilli, and it had an intermediate language called Fuzzil, and he would apply mutations on his intermediate language in different ways, and then he would transform the intermediate language back to JavaScript. Now, of course, grammar-based fuzzing still has some limitations. It, you are only able to find bugs that match the grammar. And so, for example, like Fuzzilli never assigns to a bug or not, never assigns to a variable more than once. You can, so you can never find a bug with it that requires to assign to a variable multiple times. That's okay because there's lots of bugs. Most bugs won't require that, but there are bugs that require assigning to a variable multiple times. And it also doesn't generate inputs with invalid syntax. And bugs like these exist. So there are things you can't, bugs you can't find if you just use grammar-based fuzzing. So if we take a look at a couple old Chromium bugs, so here's one where there's, we required a semantic error assigning to a const variable, which was shadowing a variable in the function. And this isn't allowed in JavaScript, but doing this led to an out of bounds write. And here's another syntax error where you had an assignment that was not allowed, and it led to a type confusion in the JavaScript engine. So what are we missing? On one level, we have byte level fuzzing, which is very good at certain programs, not good at interpreters. We have grammar-based fuzzing, which is very good at interpreters, but still missing part of the stack. And that is token level fuzzing. So token level fuzzing, the goal isn't to replace either of these other fuzzers, but to be used in different situations or find different bugs in them. So for token level fuzzing, we apply the mutations on individual tokens. What does that mean? It means that we'll replace another one valid token with another valid token always, or insert a series of valid tokens, or remove a series of valid tokens. And this allows the fuzzer to make more useful mutations. So if we take that same example from earlier, while bar.x, and we apply token level fuzzing on it, we might get if bar.x, number bar.x, while bar plus x, and while while.x. Of course, so some of those are still syntax errors or not valid JavaScript, but that's fine. 
most of these inputs that you can tell they're much better mutations than the ones you were seeing earlier from byte level fuzzing. They might not make sense always, but because you're, if you're using a coverage guide fuzzer, token level fuzzing can still explore it iteratively because it will cover more, it will hit more code coverage and generate more better inputs. So if we take a look at the implementation for this, it's quite simple. So first we take some input seeds. So I have an input seed shown here. And we're going to, so you can see that we have different variable names like foo and x. Well, we don't want to have infinitely variable names. So we replace all the variables with var1, var2, var3, and so on. And same with numbers. We have a list of OK numbers, and we just replace each number with the closest number. Now, of course, that changes things and limits us a little bit, but it prevents an infinite explosion from having infinitely, infinitely many variable names. The next step is to identify the tokens in the input and assign unique numbers to them. So we split that input into each individual token, and then we assign each of them a number. So the word function might give the number four. And so every instance of function is going to have the same, be assigned the same number four. And now we can just encode our input. We can take our input JavaScript and replace it with a list of numbers. And that list of numbers corresponds exactly to that input. It, each number corresponds to the course, is for the corresponding token. And we can have a one-to-one -one mapping here. Now that the inputs are a list of numbers, that means we can apply mutations directly on the numbers. We don't really have to worry about what they are. We just mutate the numbers. And then before executing an input, we decode this list of numbers back into JavaScript tokens. And this only requires very small modifications to a fuzzer like AFL. So for our experiments, we compared against other state-of-the-art fuzzers, AFL for byte level fuzzer, Code Alchemist, and Fuzzilli for, Java, for um, grammars-based fuzzers. And then we ran token level AFL on the latest JavaScript engines for 60 days on 30 cores. And so here's first the results of the comparison experiments. We ran for three days on 30 cores, and we repeated this five times for each different fuzzer and JavaScript engine combination. And token level AFL, our implementation of token level fuzzing, found the most bugs of any of the tested fuzzers. And we also found that the bugs it found were not, didn't get, were not discovered by other JavaScript and other fuzzers as much. So other fuzzers found different bugs than token level AFL fuzz found. And then we also did a longer experiment where we just ran token level fuzzing and tried to find as many bugs as possible. We did this for 60 days straight on 30 cores. And token level fuzzing found 16 V8 bugs, four JavaScript core bugs, three Spire Monkey bugs, and six Chakra core bugs. Now, of course, a good number of these bugs ended up being um, debug checks or not exploitable, but we did find exploitable bugs for every single fuzzer or for every single JavaScript engine. So for a couple case studies, a couple examples of bugs that our fuzzer token level fuzzing found, we have this one where we have this very simple syntax error. Of, we have this one after the call to super, and this triggered an out of bounds read in JavaScript in V8's JavaScript engine. And as so Google's fuzzers, which are running internally, never found this bug before we did because they don't generate this sort of invalid syntax, but token level fuzzing does. Another case study is this um, bug also in V8, which was found by token level fuzzing. As you can see, this one's actually quite complex. It um, it has many statements and it doesn't have any syntax errors in it. This one gets parsed and runs successfully. And that's because the cover, get, coverage guided nature of token level fuzzing. So in conclusion, token level fuzzing is a promising new technique. It can make use of existing mutational based fuzzers such as AFL and libfuzzer. And it finds different bugs than other state of the art fuzzers such as grammar based fuzzers. And I think it's a very promising new technique for fuzzing. It's kind of its own paradigm. It runs at a completely different level 
than either grammar-based fuzzing or byte-based fuzzing. And I think that it can be applied to many other situations and of course, other interpreters than just JavaScript engines. Thank you. Is there any questions?